welcome back to a new video. It's been a while, but today I have something pretty special. With 1.15, we are now able to read strings into a Java. For example, I type something into this book, and then um, I type this command, and it will convert what I wrote into uh, the book into a Java. This is mainly possible because um, this bug here has been fixed command output which should be sorted, don't get sorted. Um, and yeah, that's been fixed. I tried recording this video already uh, a couple of times, but sadly I'm completely unable to explain how uh, my uh, module, the Dustus, which is available on GitHub, uh, works. So instead I wrote this seven page document, which you can read if you're interested in the how it works. Otherwise you can also um, just use the model here it's explained how to put in values and do things with it, so that's pretty nice. Instead, uh, I'm gonna show a couple of possible use cases for this. So, um, I already showed you the most basic one, it's just reading a player input from a book. Um, another really interesting one is skulls. So, skulls in Minecraft have this thing here which doesn't look like much, but it's basic C4 and contains a lot of interesting information such as the Unix timestamp, a player's skin URL, a player's cape URL, a player's and a player's model. So that means we can check what cape a player has, if they have changed their skin since the last time we changed, uh, check them, what their model is, so Alex or Steve, and um, the Unix timestamp. I'm not sure if I already said that. So, um, yeah, anyway, this is the input decoding. You can see timestamp, kind of hard to read. And here's the profile name, and here's texture skin, and here's the cape part. And, it, um, for example, I have the Realmscape, and for everyone that has Realmscape, this URL is the same. So that way we could detect if somebody has a realm, uh, Realmscape. Um, we can also do things like reading in strings, like this is an example string, and then getting substrings. Uh, or this one allows us to read the seed. It runs slash seed, and then gets the last output, which looks like this. And in there, there's a seed, and we can um, get the seed from that, yeah. To actually achieve that, we need um, a module Gibbs made for this, which is a JSON parser. So it pa uh, parses this output into JSON, so we can actually get the uh, seed out from there. Um, and Gibbs also made the model to decode Base64 out of a Java, which my module outputs. One other thing is, we can read in a player name and do weird things with that. For example, here my name underscore TSTS underscore becomes this. Um, Yes, what I already said, we can get the Unix time from a skull. For that, we first need to run my string module, then we run Gibbs's base64 module, then Gibbs's uh, uh, JSON parser, and then Zuzu made a system to convert Unix timestamp into actual date, which you can see here. Um, I link uh, all the videos and stuff. Uh, Gibbs has made a video that explains the base64 and the JSON modules he made, for example. Um, then here's another one that does things with names. This one attempts to shorten names in a logical way. So, for example, it deletes numbers at the end, or if a name is really long, it only takes the first section. Um, so you can see most of them look pretty good. There's some, on, uh, some like Sashibi who are the shortened name is kind of bad, but for bo uh, most of them, the shortened name still makes a lot of sense. So this uses the string module and some extra logic to decide how to shorten the names. And another use would be, oh, well, that's not really a use, but usually if you run this, um, it runs in a tick and slows down the game and nothing can happen because it takes an entire tick. This module also allows doing it asynchronously, where it will be slower, but we can move around and open command blocks and stuff during this time. Usually opening a command block wouldn't be possible since we're in the same tick and the game is just slowed down. If we're running it in an async way, um, this is a lot better. And we can also run the module in a parallel mode where it will return characters as soon as it finds them. This is probably useful if you're trying to pass a really long player input in a map 
and you probably don't want to freeze the map until the entire input has been passed so you can instead do something like this and start doing something with the player's input while the rest of the input is still passing. We already uh, also uh, have another use here we have the want to get the cape as I've said before as possible um, Gibbs also made this one it's uh, however all based on the string base module so this was the parallel one now we can run this it runs the string uh, module uh, again sadly passing the entire skull is quite slow on a surfer it runs quite a bit faster or on a better computer but mine is not particularly good so i have to deal with the waiting times um, then once it has passed the string, it will once again go through Gibbs's two models, modules, and then it checks for the cape, and we can um, cape check with this one. Yeah, so it says realms here because I have a realms cape. Yes, there we go, and. Another use I'm currently developing is um, simple regex. For example, we can put in A, A, B, and then this is the input string and A star A plus B. Right now I'm just directly input, uh, putting it as a char array, but usually we would uh, run it through the string reader and then input it into regex, and this just returns matches it finds. There's some other inputs here, um, A, B, X, and then uh, B one to two times and anything any amount of time returns B X and here A A B A uh, looks for one A finds that three times or here which one is interesting this one is probably fairly interesting it looks for A plus A plus A plus B in A A A B that uh, returns A A A B and yeah. This is just what we've been working on for the last uh, two weeks. I'm sure there's a million other uses for being able to pass strings and doing things with them. And I'm sure uh, people will come up with great things. Well, that was it. If you want to know how it works or use this module yourself, you can go to the GitHub or the explanation document I've linked. Thanks for watching. Bye.